a one-woman band. Maybe it's a good thing, which is the brand new single from Katie Tunstall, performed live here. Yeah, the guitar. <laughs> is that ye oldie tambo that's that provided is the percussion? OG tambo. <laughs> That uh, went on a little walkies. Go on, tell people if oh, they don't know. Oh, man. It's it been in the so, papers and everything. I mean, it was so funny. I'm always complaining that the papers should have happy stories in as well as bad <laughs> ones, and I actually made one well myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were playing in Wick, um, and it was, off the, it was off the chain. It was a crazy gig. Everyone was hammered. <laughs> and um, two ladies tried to climb onto the stage at the end of the gig. And a- after I left the stage, my guitar tech, Larry, said... Have you got your tambourine? I said, no, I've not got it. And he goes, well, it's not there. I was like, you what? And someone had nicked off with my tambourine. And it's, I mean, it's a cheap tambourine. But the thing is, I've used it a lot and it and it basically dirties up the bells on it. And so it sounds really cool. So it takes a little time to get the tambourine sounding like that. I also, this is a little scoop for anyone trying to busk with a tambourine with your foot. You attach a cleaning sponge to the bottom of it and gaffer tape it on so it springs back up when uh-huh. you stamp on it. And uh, it takes a minute to get that done and get it right. And I realised I was a bit sentimentally attached to it as well. I've had it for quite a long time. So I put this tweet out and I'm on Facebook as well and just said, look, Wick, amazing show. Gonna give my tambourine back. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no hard feelings, over-enthusiastic. Get back to Mackay's Hotel tomorrow morning. <clears throat> And so it goes viral. There's all these like Photoshop pictures of what my tambourine's been up to on its dirty stop out night out in Wick. It was like one of the rings from the Olympics in Rio. It was um, in a scene of train spotting with Ewan McGregor, which you can imagine. It was in Liam Gallagher's mouth. Um, People are so clever. I mean, it was hilarious. And... um, and 11 o'clock the next morning, the tambourine turns up at the hotel in a taxi alone. Lovely. Who? I mean, tambourines can't pay for cabs. That's brilliant. So it turned up alone. And actually, on Shetland, um, Davey, who was driving us around, kindly showing us around Shetland, was telling us that when the Stone Roses played in Shetland, the same thing happened to Ian Brown. And his, his tambourine got nicked and it turned up the next morning on the steps of the police station with a little brown tag saying, sorry, Ian. <laughs> so I think it's the secret life of tambourine. That is so quite sweet. Quite frankly. It's lovely. We've been talking so much about Scotland, but you talked about going to Ellie and you actually made this right, Ken and Ellie, did. didn't you? I did. And I think it's really significant that I've made it there. It's definitely full of those kind of big, wide choruses and backing vocals. And I really wasn't planning on making a record. I was going over there to work on film music and mm. I'd um, done the Sundance Film Composers Lab and I was really getting into it. And about a year after being there, I love listening to music in the car. And I was driving around Laurel Canyon and Hollywood Hills oh. and listening to Tom Petty and Fleetwood Mac and Neil Young, Joni Mitchell, and just totally got into my blood. And mm. that's where that music's from and I, I understand why. Oh, it's lovely to have that sort of joyous feeling. And there's yeah. so, it's what I love about your music because, you know, you're, you're such a brilliant live performer, just even doing this kind of stripped back thing here <laughs> without the band. But lyrically, it's so interesting. And that last song that we heard, you know, there's yeah. so much going on there, but it sums up, I think, a lot of where you're at uh, at yeah. the moment, kind of taking I've, a chance I, in life. Yeah, and a big, a big, big thing for me is just reconnecting with my vulnerability. But I think the trick is, as a songwriter is really encompassing, you know, living in your strength, but allowing your vulnerability to be just as important. And I think that's what I'd shied away from. I think I was just so, just trying to protect myself in the face of being known. Yeah. Um, and I've realised that really the vulnerability is is such an important part of my job. Absolutely. Say it how it is. Carol King, she's, yeah. my, she's my master class. Oh. Say it how it is. And she's still going strong. No, she sure is. Um, you're going to do another song for us. And I, I thought it was funny on, on, on Facebook, I think it was. People can be slightly cheeky, but in a caring way. They're going to get, <laughs> this is the longest song title of all time. It is. It's but you know, the somebody. really cool thing is that when you, when you play it on <laughs> iTunes on your phone, the whole thing just fits on the screen. And I wasn't on purpose, but one of the fans was like, did you count the letters? <laughs> Love it. But I didn't. I'll leave you to say the title. Yeah, I'm g- I'm going to play you an acoustic version of this. It's a it's a really big kind of um, bouncing track on the record, but it's actually so nice as a as a gentler track as well. And ready for it, big breath. It's called. It took me so long to get here, but here I am. <laughs> 